My guest at this time is a former GCW world champion. He is also producing and promoting for the culture as part of GCW's The Collective. It's our good friend, AJ Gray. AJ, welcome back to the Wrestling Inc. Daily. What up, dog? Yeah, good to see you again, AJ. Um, well, this is a big show, man. Uh, I spoke with JTG just a couple days ago, so I've already kind of got his take on, on what's going on in y'all's match. But from your perspective, I mean, you can literally pick anybody to wrestle on these shows. Why JTG? Why did you feel this was the bout for this year? Uh, you remember that last time I talked to you? I was like, yeah, I'm going to help JTG become the star he should have been. Yep. That's the reason right there. Yeah. Yeah. And and so are you guys going to be the main event? That was something he seemed. No, no. That's Rich Swan and Two Gold Scorpio. Let's be real. Okay. Well, Rich hey. Swan, Two Gold Scorpio. Uh, fair, fair. Very accomplished. But I mean, dude, the poster for you and uh, you and JTG looks sick. I mean, it's an incredible poster. It's going to be two matches after mine. Rich Swan and JTG and um, fucking Leo Rush and Lee Moriarty. Like, come on. Mm-hmm. Those are true marquee matches. Like, not saying me and JTG isn't, but I can I can, I can can call a spade a spade, and I can respect others as well. Like, let's be real here. Those are two. Those are the two right there. Okay. Well, we'll get to those here in just a second, but I want to talk a little more about you and JTG. So, like, I really had a great, great chat with Jay, and, like, it's interesting to me, you know, at this point, he's, you know, a veteran, you know, he's a veteran status. He's been on top on TV. Um, and now he's out trying to, you know, get a singles run going here. What's it like working with him in the locker room? What does he bring right now to, to for the culture and that and that crew right now? Oh, he brings like a side of like a side of wrestling that not a lot of people have. He's had he was like in WWE for like, what, almost a decade. Yeah. Like, so like, yeah, he brings that. No one has that experience on the table. He brings that to the locker room. He brings a great attitude. Like, I've never seen that man in a bad mood. Like, he's, like, always excited to be there, always ready to do whatever it takes just to make the show good. Like, he brings that to the table. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, you talked about to, to spark the fire, I believe is what you said there about, about JTG. Like, what do you want to see him do, man? Like, after talking to him and hearing how clear it, I mean, dude is yoked right now. Look yeah, at he's him. yoked. Dude, he's big. Well, he's always been yoked. Let's be real. Like, I'm just surprised – that he hasn't already kind of found his way onto a national stage at this point. You know, he's been out there I mean, for a while. It's wrestling. You know, rest, weirder things in wrestling happen. Like weird things in wrestling happen all the time. He's he needs to get he needs to get like his legitimate run. Like he needs to get his own run right now. Yeah. No. That's what I that's I want to see him with his run, not like and no offense to him being a tag team guy. But I don't want him to see him in like a tag team. I want to see him be JTG on his own for once yeah i think he deserves that because he's put in the work for it yeah and you know he's putting in the work here like through the pandemic i mean you know aj you have as well obviously you've been working here the past several months through this thing uh are you starting to see the light at the end of the end of the tunnel thinking about like what's going to be here yeah i am i'm getting my second vaccine next week baby so yeah i see the light at the end of the tunnel yes i do how does that how does that feel for you what are your expectations for you and other guys like jtg to be able to see more more eyes and do more shows and stuff again here pretty soon like i just hope all of america can get vaccinated and stuff like so we can return to what we once was like like i'm I'm just talking about like a society aspect like where like we're out there enjoying things like with not like the same worries about like catching a, a crazy disease just by breathing. Like mm-hmm. I just want us to return and be able to do things and be able to work and be able to have fun and just be able to do things that we wanted to do. Yeah. And we've been yeah. locked in the house for the past year. We can't really do. Are you, are you anticipating more people getting signed, more opportunities coming about when this pandemic is over? Is that what you think is going to happen here? Or you think that it's going to be a, a gradual kind of uh, move back? Into- to be honest, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, like the WWE just signed like twenty something people last class. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to predict it because <laughs> you never count your eggs before they hatch. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, but you brought up uh, Leo Rush versus Lee Moriarty, man. That is a that is an absolute fire pairing. Uh, putting those two together. I don't have they ever wrestled each other before. No, they haven't. Oh man, that's insane. I think most of the card is first time matchups. Oh, okay, cool. That's awesome, dude. I mean, I saw these two on the card together. I got very excited. Is this the you think this is the one to steal the show? Maybe even steal all the collective here, putting these two together. Rich Swan and Scorpio steal. You think Rich and Scorpio, dude? Okay, we'll talk. I was gonna ask you about Scorpio. We get back to to Leo and Re- uh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No offense to Leo or Lee, because that's gonna be. There's a reason I put those two together because those are probably like two of the best in the world right now. Yeah, the steal. I think it's just me loving the matchup of Rich Swan and Scorpio that I may, my, may that I may be kind of like biased and partisan to it 
Okay, and is it because like you see a little bit of too cold in in Rich Swan? I mean, with the no, skin. it's because no. I see two fucking legends going at each other, bro. I don't know, Rich I see Swan. Two like, legends. He likes to dance his way to the ring. Like that's what I was seeing in my head. No, no, no. Fuck no, okay. no. I don't. I don't. Also, I don't pay attention. Also, that outside stuff because once you get in the ring they're two completely different competitors i agree with that well they are and they aren't right i mean no they are completely rich swan also is like 180 pounds two gold scorpio is like 245 yeah they're completely different completely different too cold still hits that flipping leg drop off the top rope i believe i think he's like yeah he still drops the bomb he still hits the tumbleweed he still hits the 450 he does everything he still used to do so it's not just that bro he can still go like he's in 1992 again I, I know. I believe he's like 55 years old right now. Like, yeah, and he, he moves around like he's 25. Okay. So what? Why? So you just are excited to see these two together here. You just think it's the Battle of Two Legends. That was all the, all there was to it when you put these guys together? No, like literally, they're two of like some of the most gifted professional wrestlers to ever grace a fucking ring. Like, let's be real right here. Like, these two are gifted athletes. And you have a matchup that you've never, that's never happened before between Rich Swan, Two Gold Scorpio. They've been, both been going at it for like 20, 20 plus years. Like, if we think about their like combined experience, it's like 50 years almost. So, like, you've never once seen those two in a ring together because they've never been in a ring together. Yeah, no. Like, I, yeah. And they've been doing the craziest of stuff and making, doing so much good on in wrestling. You've never seen them in the ring together. That's why I want them in the ring together. That's why. So wait, too cold. He took on AR Fox before, right? But this, so what is this his second for the culture appearance? Or yeah, okay, gotcha. Two, it's second. only like the second and a half for the culture. I was about to say, I, th- I thought there was a third one out there. I was doing my research. No, it's a one point five because it was it, like half a card. Because it was part of the fight forever, right? Yeah, it was half a card. It was like four matches. It was half. It was a one point five. Okay, gotcha. All right. So, but, so too cold has been in the for the culture locker room and well as well and like. You know, I kind of had this talk with Effie, and, you know, he talks about Cassandro and, like, how that's a real legend for him in the LGBTQ community. What's it like for you and the rest of that locker room to to have Two Cold Scorpio there? Is he engaging? Does he give advice? Is yeah, he he's, he's still cool as fuck, man. He's cool <laughs> as fuck. Most times they're like, don't meet your heroes because they'll let you down. Yeah. Meet Two Cold Scorpio because that man is still a good human being. He, like, never switches it up. So he's still the same person he would be if he's outside the ring. Like, He's still the same guy. He's still very easy to get along with, very easy to talk to, very engaging. He's still giving people critiques on their matches. I can never say enough good about Tico Scorpio. Yeah, well, great, man. Well, I, you know, I and that was something that he came up in the JTG and I's interview. We we both talked about our love of the Flash Funk action figure for a little while. You know, he just was the coolest action figure we had growing up. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. There's a Shelton Benjamin from like 04 I have, and I can never get over that action figure. Oh, is that the is that the one with the black and gold or no? No, he's got no. That was before. That was before. Um, it was like right after he brought. It might not have been 04. It might have been like 03. It's like right after he got traded to Raw. You know, he was wearing the biker shorts, the red. Right. But before the mama stuff. A classic. Um, are you cooking now? What do you? What do you? What are we watching you do right now? Drinking pickle juice. Okay, that's good. Uh, just Vlasic. I mean, for those that can't see in audio form right now, uh, AJ is taking a moment, is lifted an entire jar of Vlasic uh, whole pickles, it looks like. So, yeah, whole dill pickles. I like the dill pickle juice tastes the best to me. I actually just drink pickle juice. Just because you like it or because there's like health benefits to it? Both. Okay. Uh, also, if you ever get a chance, tequila shot with a pickle back. I have had that before. We actually have, uh, they're called Devil. That's the only way I can drink tequila now. Really? Oh. Yeah, I do not. I don't like tequila in the first place. So my friends are like, hey, hey, do you want a shot of tequila? I'm like, can I get a pickle back? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, all right, sick. Because, woo, that shit burns. That pickle just takes it away. Of all the things I've ever had happen during an interview, I've never had anybody stop the interview to drink pickle juice. That was like a first. I mean, I didn't stop it. I was going to let you keep talking. Oh, I, was, I can hear you still. We flowed through it, right? We flowed through it. But I've never had anybody drink pickle juice while I'm interviewing him in, in one of my interviews. You know, not, yeah, knocking, man. not knocking it. Bro, I don't want to catch no cramps out there. I get my body right. It's, gonna, it's only a couple days away. So you talk sleeping a lot. Like, yo, I've been, I'm getting rest. I've been stretching. I'm getting ready, bro. I got like fucking 10 plus matches, yo. I gotta get ready, dog. 
Okay, we will talk about the other matches here in a second. So back to Rich real quick. So you put over the legend that is Too Cold Scorpio. Do you feel Rich Swan is appreciated in his generation right now? Do you think people give him the credit he deserves for the work he's doing? No, I don't think we do. But there's going to come a time point. We're going to look back at Rich Swan's indie like wrestling career. We're going to be like, whoa, this guy was giving us like fire for so long before we actually really appreciated it. Like, I thought, like, he finally started to get a little bit of appreciation around the time, like, where he did the Cruiserweight Classic stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, no one really gave Rich Swan his true flowers. Because that man fucking kills it every time and everywhere he goes. Mm-hmm. And, and he's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe, the, the sitting Impact uh, World Champion right yes, now. Yes, he is currently the Impact World Champion. Does, do they have any say over the booking? Did you have to get this approved? Or, or is it just completely he's, he's allowed to do his I'm own? not. It's not an Impact World title shot because I don't. I'm nope, 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 nope. I'm not accidentally. I'm not accidentally booking another champ. Nope, nope. You can bring the title to the ring. It's not online. Not on the line. Um, not how, on the line. How much longer do you think Lee Moriarty is going to be available on the independents? I, I hope not long, honestly. And that's not saying it like in a bad way. I don't want anything bad to happen. To I want him to go make a lot of money because dude's a tremendous human being. He deserves everything. And plus, he's like one of the only people I know that loves wrestling with that much passion. Like that man loves professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he gives his all to it. So I want to see him like make a tremendous amount of money being a professional wrestler at the highest level. So when I say I don't want to be on the indies much longer, it's not because any like negative aspect. I want that man to make money. Yeah, and it's interesting too because you have him paired with Leo, right? Who kind of already went through the cycle and is now finding his way. Where I mean, how is how is it working with Leo from you? I mean, he's only been back in pro wrestling, I think maybe half a year now. After taking a little time to clear his head, he's tremendous as well. I'm, I can't say anything negative about it. Like every time I see Leo, is nothing but good, good vibes and shit. Listen, I can't be. I, I, I wouldn't book people if I didn't like them. Like, I don't want to say that, but like, if I couldn't get along with him in the locker room, I could. You can't run a show with him. So everybody on my show is literally on the show one because they're one of the best performers in the world, and two because I have nothing bad to say about them. I don't have bad thing to say about anybody on this show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, There's nothing bad. Um, well, we've talked about kind of the top three matches here, the the marquee matches. But talk to me a little bit about so what are some of the other bouts on the show? I know you got Calvin Tankman here. I know My- Myron, I believe, is in that fatal four way as well. Yep. Who are who are some of the other bouts that people should be getting excited about here for for the culture this year? Brian Keith and Darius Lockhart. Okay. Darius is coming off. I think it's a torn peck. It's either torn, it's either torn peck or torn bicep. It happened in the PAWDC uh, title match where it was like him, Trish. I know um, Mr. Grimm ran in or something. When O'Shea was ran in, it was something like that. I have a bad brain. I have a bad brain, but I remember the general premise of it. It was the very first match, crowning champion, when Trish Dora won. Darius Lockhart is like technically one of the best wrestlers I've ever laid my eyes on. He's just been hurt here recently. That's not a fault to his own. There's no negative about it. It, It's life. Brian Keith is a guy from Texas that no one's really paid attention to up until like the last couple weeks. Cause like me and Mouse were on a show that a new Texas show. And we both heard a steel tipping and instantly we both just like started just like zoomed in on it and he can fucking go. He's just never been given the huge platform yet. So like, Darius, he's getting a platform. Brian, he's giving the platform. I want to see both of them take off because of this platform. I don't want the credit for it because they have put in the work for it. They deserve the credit. I just want, I got I got the platform. Like, here's a platform. Y'all go be the best y'all possible. I want to watch y'all become stars. I may or may not become a star one day. That I don't give a fuck about that. But if I can watch each and every one of y'all, especially these two, go become absolute stars. My job's done. My job's done. You sound like you really enjoy the promoter role. AJ. I hate it. No, I but fucking but, hate but, it. But I you, fucking hate but it. That, but that passion I hear in your voice when you, when I, you, I mean, like, sure, the day to day grind of promoting is very hard and oftentimes unrewarding, but the end result does seem like it's very rewarding to you. Oh, the end result's absolutely rewarding. Like watching your peers and your like friends, we can make money because they are good at something and you gave them a platform to show how good they were at. Absolutely, that's fucking worth it. Yeah, yeah. But it's a lot of work, man. You know, a lot of day-to-day what you're doing as well. Sorry, dude. Fucking sinuses. That's right. Too much pickles. Oh, my God. 
Tennessee is fucking super spring season and there's nothing but trees outside and pollen's kicking my ass. Yeah, we got that going on here in Chicago right now. It sucks. But no, like fucking it's just so hard sometimes because it's like a mental grind. And then like, I don't know. I'm not gonna get to it. I just get frustrated a lot way too easily, especially with this shit. It's just really fucking ag- aggravating and really annoying sometimes. Yeah. But like watching people, like top flight, watching them take off after the last one, that made me feel good. That made me feel tremendous. End of thought. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got it. I didn't know. Oh, no. I didn't know if there was a bus I just, there. I was like, I was looking <laughs> I was outside and I was like, looking at, <laughs> no. no, 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 dude. I got, like I said, I got a bad brain, dude. So no. I was like, when I was saying that, it's and okay. I looked outside, I was like, oh, shit. The grill's kind of corroding. Fuck. Okay. Okay. This is time for new grill. We're going to stay on track. I got like two questions Sorry. left. I got, Sorry. Like two, I got like two or three questions left, AJ. Okay. My bad. My bad. No, no, no. So I was going to ask you, uh, you know, before I get to my, my last question, but like we, you've, you've got a lot of the shows you're doing this weekend too. What are some of the other events you're going to be participating in? Where else is, are people going to be able to see you? All right. Let me get out the long Jericho size move list yeah, where it says arm bar 77 times. Yeah. All right. First, I got the acid cup day one. Then I got for the culture. Then the next day, I start off the day with me versus James Drake at the Have Fun Be Sad show, Action and Suck. Then after that match, I'm going straight to New Texas for that show. And I'm wrestling Brian Keith on that one. After that, I'm going straight to Acid Cup Night 3. Well, Day 2. Day 2. Shit, not Night 3. Okay. Acid Cup Day 2. Yeah. Then I'm taking a break during fucking RSV spring break because then fuck him. And then uh, I'm going that midnight show, Violence and Suffering. Mm-hmm. Then day three starts. I got to beat somebody up on Effie's Big Gay Brunch and like a fucking pup collar match. I don't know what a pup collar match is, but hey. But I ask. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know. I better be a fucking full size dog collar because I'm like a fucking German shepherd out here. Anyways, I got that. Then I take a break. I don't know. What to, uh, then I got Planet Death. It was me and Akira. I don't know who I'm wrestling now, but I'm still doing Deathmatch shit. I'm doing it. I am still wrestling. I wish nothing but the best to Akira. I hope he gets out because he just tested positive for COVID. COVID. Oh, my God. And then I want to wrestle him again one day. But, like, fucking, man, that sucks. It really does suck. I'm not even, like, bullshitting right here. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm just praying for him. But, um, yeah, I got to wrestle on Planet Death. Don't know against who, but I'll figure it out eventually. And after that, no peace underground. And what? Do you, and no peace underground. That is. Are you death doing a death match there or no? Absolutely, because those the last two shows. And I don't know if you've ever wrestled after a death match. <laughs> that shit fucking hurts. <laughs> it hurts during the death match. Now wrestling a regular match after a death match hurts. So I've scheduled myself to have my death matches at the last day. Yeah, dude. Uh, I would imagine that, you know, you go to the death match, you think you've got all the glass out of your back, but you're not sure. And then you go to take a bump in the next match. No, it's no, it's no, you yeah. think you got all the glass out your back. You know, you don't have it all out of your back because, you know, that shit just sits on you a lot. It like, it just like sits in your like waistband a lot. It just fucking sits there. I was real true story. And I don't usually like to tell stories about myself in my interviews, but uh, Marcus Crane, uh, mutual friend, he's he's going to be back. He's got his skull put back. Together. Yes, I know. You got his skull fucking reattached. Yeah, he had a hole in his He had a hole in his, he had a hole in his fucking head. A hole in his actual head there for a while uh, from the most disgusting. Like, check your staple gun always. Right. You Bro, know? yes. Because like I was there the night though the day because it was supposed to be a GCW national show. Oh, he was you coming were back from Cali. We were at the Airbnb waiting on him to land. We never heard anything. Uh, Show goes on. We're like, fuck, we got to do something. Just to figure it out. We get word that night that he never woke up when his plane landed in Vegas because he had a connecting in Vegas. Mm-hmm. That's where they found yep. him, right? We the found plane. out that day. But, hey, like, that night. He, he, like, passed out on the plane and they took him to the hospital in Vegas or something like that, right? That's why he's been in Vegas so much because, like, he almost died in Vegas. He almost. He was died. in the hospital in Vegas. I know. I know. For those that don't know, I'll get Marcus on here sometime when he's capable of full speech and everything like that. Uh, he's got most of his speech rack. Right? It just hurts him for talk for a long time. So. I, that's what I was going to say. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to give people, I don't want to give medical updates. No, he's not. He's not like, he's not to the point where he can't talk. He just refuses not to talk so much right now because I don't know if people have had brain injuries, but when you use your brain at a high function after a brain injury, it's extremely tiring and physically taxing. 
Mm -hmm. um, well, I was at a bar one time with Marcus pre hole in the. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that always a good way to start the story? I was at a bar with Marcus Pre. Yeah, dude. Fuck it. That's, oh, that's a blast. You had a blast. I already know you did. Where oh, were you at? Reggie's? Oh, uh, uh, well, Marcus and I have hung out a lot. Marcus and I actually promoted a couple shows here in Chicago. For this for this, for this this point of the story right here, where, what bar were y'all at? We were at Replay Lincoln Park. Uh, okay. Which is an arcade bar in our neighborhood. So imagine a bunch of arcade games and pinball machines. And a bar where all the beers are nine dollars because the arcade. God, is. fuck that place! It's like seven to nine, but then you can play all the video games you want for. Don't free. care, don't care. Seven. Fuck them games. Go to Dave and Buster's. Yeah, it's cheaper I, beer there. Well, but Dave and Buster's, I spend a lot because I, I go to. Dave I spend a lot of money on the games. We're not even lie. I don't even get I, drunk at Dave and Buster's. I just play the game. I'm like fucking spending all my money on Guitar Hero and shit. Nah, I'm there a ticket, so many games. I'm a tickets guy. I got to go to David Buster's. <sighs> all about tickets for me. Dude, I, I actually, I, I used to have a David Buster's card in my wallet. Oh, I like have. Where you just reload it and keep putting points on it? Where's I have? Where's my cards here? So I don't have it on my desk, but I have an I have a David Buster's and an FTW card in my wallet. I, I don't know what FTW is except fuck the world, but FTW is another uh, David Buster. They're like oh, a, okay. They're like a bougier. David Buster. I used to have like there's this I think it was in St. Uh, like up down. It was an arcade bar there. Okay. Now when I would go to St. Louis, I'd go there because it's fucking of course I can sit there and play NBA Jam and get fucked up. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. I like the shooting games. Those are always my favorites, like Area 51. So no, I don't like shooting. In, 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 it reminds me too much of real life. Yeah, that's true. I grew up anyway. I grew up in Texas, different culture with guns, you know. So anyway, uh <laughs> The uh, the uh, the games I like the most are the pinball machine games though those are great. I'm a big pinball maniac. <laughs> Understandable. Um. So anyway, I'm at the bar with Marcus. All right, finish my story here. I also got distracted. Um. I'm at the bar with Marcus, and we're sitting there and we're drinking, and I see him. He's just picking at his arm, and he like finally gets us, and he pulls this piece of glass. He's like, "Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what it was," and he throws it on the bar, and it was the most it was like the most random thing I'd ever like a human. Pulled glass out of his body casually, just as we were having drinks at a bar. You know, like sometimes after death matches for me, like you'll see me picking at my head like this right here, and then I'll pull like shards of glass out of my head. I have, I honestly still have a piece of glass, or it's like a piece of what is something in my arm. What? what? And like I've just been too much of a pussy to cut it out, so I'm hoping like in a death match, if you ever see me like going to town on my arm, I'm I'm trying to cut myself so I can get this fucking piece of glass out. I'm not gonna judge. I'm not gonna judge that statement. Because I don't want to do. I don't want to do it in real. I don't want to do it like while I'm not bleeding. So I might not. Maybe like while I'm already bloody, I'd be like, okay, I'll hurt a little bit less. I'm hurting everywhere else. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you have have the other person cut you open right where you want. No, to I don't want to. I don't see. Here's the thing. It's such a random spot on my arm, and someone be like, "Why the fuck is he cutting someone in the forearm? This is dumb." I want to see real violence, like not someone going to surgery on somebody. And also, if I'm just sitting around with my friends, I don't want to be like, hey, friend, take that knife and cut this glass out of my arm real quick. Who, who says shit like that? I don't know, man. Who says half the shit that deathmatch wrestlers say? Take these wooden spikes. Please drill them into my brain. No I one know. says that. No one says that. It just happens, okay? It's wrestling. Uh, uh, all right. Whatever. Not, I mean, I have a lot of respect for what you guys do. It's not my, not my thing. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd have the balls to do that. Uh, well, understandable. All right, last question I had for you. So you you mentioned Ricky Shane Page earlier dismissively, right? Obviously, you have some history there with Ricky. Uh, he's taking on Nick Gage, or he's put the title on the line against Gage. I'm very excited for this bout. Um, as a former world champion, as somebody who was, I believe, so if, correct me if I'm wrong, was you beat Gage, and then Ricky came in and stole it from you after you'd held it just a very yep. couple minutes? Like right? seven minutes. Okay, so what does this bout mean to you? What do you think is going to happen here between these two men? No, I don't know. You got no, you got no predictions for Gage versus Saint pa Ricky Shane Page. I hope Gage wins. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. I'm I'm the odd guy out. I'm just chilling. I got my own show. I got other shit to worry about. Okay. Do you want to take back the GCW Championship in 2021 with fans back and everything? I, if the chance arises, yeah. Okay. All right. All right, LAJ. That's all I got. I just want to make money. Okay. <laughs> I got this is a lot of fun thank you for uh thank you for the fun chat and 
You know, I drink, I like, I have spicy pickles that I dig. I was literally just about to grab a jar of pickles once we got off this and drink I'm, some more. I'm thinking about it. I, I don't know if I could drink it, but I'll eat some pickles after this. Bro, know? let's drink some pickle juice, man. I don't know, man. I don't want to Dude, it. it tastes good. I don't know, man. Like, uh, I'll think about it. We'll dude, see. Dude, it tastes good. Trust me. Okay. You're going right. to be like, oh, that's kind of salty. Wait, that's satisfying. We'll see. AJ, where do you want to send people to uh, find out more about For the Culture, where they can watch all those great things? My fucking Twitter page, at Rich Homie Juice. Because I, you know, I mean, have you ever seen these links nowadays? I can't recite them. I mean, I post about it, so that's the best way to find out. I cannot remember that fucking link to save my life, so my Twitter page, I have on there. I just posted a match grab between Brooke Valentine and Faye, I mean, Willow Jack, I mean, Willow Nightingale versus... Kira Hogan and Tasha Steels because Faye got hurt. Um, so yeah, the link is right there. The Fight TV link is right there too. I can't remember them. I can't remember them, bro. Like for the culture is wrestling show. Google like that can use that, but I can't. I don't. There's too many dashes and backslashes and all this other shit. I can't remember that, bro. I can barely remember my own fucking name.